And, uh, two matters, both overseas. Um, a couple questions on Haiti first. Uh, the delegation that was sent down there, um, has anyone remained in Haiti to, to continue to oversee what's happening? Or have there been any commitment to provide security forces to Haiti? And is the U.S. taking any steps to organize perhaps emissaries or troops from other countries to help safeguard the situation? So as we announced last week, uh, an interagency delegation, as you noted, uh, was on the ground in Port-au-Prince yesterday and returned home. Uh, I'm not aware of anyone staying from that delegation on the ground. I will check that important detail for you after the briefing. Uh, while they were there, uh, as we announced in our readout, uh, they worked to get a better understanding of the request for assistance and to offer assistance to law enforcement uh, forces, uh, th the law enforcement process, I should say, on the ground. They met with both the acting prime minister uh, and prime minister designate uh, as both of those uh, individuals, and they did receive requests while they were there on the ground for additional assistance. Uh, they did also brief the president uh, this morning. Uh, he will receive regular briefings, as he does, from his national security team on the events in Haiti, the requests coming in, and how we can help. What was clear from their visit also, what that was, I should say, what was not clear is uh, what the future of political leadership looks like in the country. And it was a reminder how vital it is for Haiti's leaders to come together to chart a united path forward. So uh, while we will continue to, this is just the beginning of our conversations, and in, we will remain in close touch with law enforcement, with individuals in Haiti, with uh, a range of leaders uh, in Haiti about how we can assist and provide assistance moving forward. I don't have any uh, announcements uh, to, to portray, to convey to all of you about assistance, uh, additional assistance today. So just to clarify, as of right now, the U.S. is not committing to having any sort of presence on the ground here. Well, that's not what I conveyed. We had a delegation that went down yesterday. They came back yesterday. They briefed the president this morning, as as was uh, as we committed to. Uh, but I don't have any. Uh, what was clear from their trip is that there is a lack of clarity about the future of political leadership. That's an important step that the people of Haiti, uh, the different governing leaders of Haiti, need to work together to determine a united path forward. And we will remain deeply engaged, as we have been for months prior to the assassination uh, with, uh, with uh, individuals in Haiti to provide assistance moving forward, but I don't have any new assistance to announce for you at this point. The other matter for me is on, on Cuba. Uh, the we saw the President's statement today about the demonstrations there on the island yesterday. Uh, two questions on that. But why hasn't President Biden taken steps to undo uh, some of the things that his predecessor, Donald Trump, did to overturn the overtures made by President Obama? And then secondly, we heard there's a, obviously a great cry yesterday or yet, during these protests for vaccines. Has Cuba on the list to get vaccines for the United States? Well, first let me say that uh, we have actually provided, over the course of the last several months, a great deal of assistance to Cuba. I just want to note this uh, because I think it's important for people to understand. Since FY, uh, since 2009, which is quite some time ago, uh, Congress has directed $20 million in democracy assistance annually. But even if you look at last year, last year alone, the U.S. exported $176 million of goods to Cuba. In the first six months of 2021, Cuba imported $123 million worth of chicken from the United States. Just as an example, obviously one of the issues that uh, the uh, that protesters are justifiably out there in the streets uh, protesting about is hunger, is lack of access to vaccines, et cetera. But we are continuing to provide a range of assistance, which we will continue to do. Uh, I will say on vaccines, one of the challenges, Jonathan, which you may be familiar with, is that Cuba has not joined COVAX. Uh, and has indicated they intend to vaccinate their population using the Abdallah vaccine, uh, which there, the Pan American Health Organization has been out there urging Cuban scientists to publish their, their results in the peer-reviewed literature on this vaccine. So in terms of COVAX would be a mechanism that we have provided, as you all know, vaccines to a range of countries in the world. We certainly recognize and understand that access to vaccines is one of the issues that a number of individuals in the streets is voicing concern about, uh, but we have to determine what the mechanism would be to work with the Cuban people to get vaccines to them.